Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I bet your drill does not have turbo, but this one does. Today, we'll be talking about this 24 volt half inch brushless hammer drill driver from Flex with turbo. Is it any good? Stay tuned to find out. All right guys, so this right here is Flex's 24 volt half inch hammer drill driver with turbo from Flex, right? It is their flagship model. The uh, model number on this one is FX1271T. Do not get it confused with other hammer drill drivers they currently have out. They have one without a hammer function. They have another one uh, that does not have turbo, like a more uh, lesser tier one. But anyways, the point is this is the best of the best from Flex, the FX2171T, and this one has turbo, okay? So before we get into our standard stuff, let's go ahead and talk about just the basic system overall, right? So Flex released, um, you know, or I guess Flex kind of appeared out of nowhere, um, backed by a you know, larger parent company a couple months ago and just like the um work just like cobalt they're only selling them at lowe's so currently i believe they have an exclusivity deal to only sell them at lowe's as a higher brand or echelon or whatnot of cobalt and just like cobalt they do run on a 24 volt system and if you're trying to figure out is there like a relation between cobalt and and flex or whatnot they're generally owned by a higher uh parent, uh, parent company right that's certainly what they mean so flex is a new brand but it they have they're not new by any means to making power tools let's go take a look at the marketing hype real quick and then we'll come in and take a better look at it this right here is the flex fx 1271t it has the flex advantage 20 percent more power with 24 volt lithium cells 25 percent longer runtime with thermotech heat management and up to 50 percent charging uh, faster charging with higher power and dual fan chargers. The uh, brushless motor is sensor free and every Flex 24 volt tool is built around an intelligent sensor free brushless motor. Do not get tricked by that. It, does, it just means the sensors aren't in the motor. It obviously has to have sensors. It's just really marketing hype. Um, this drill has turbo increased speed for faster results unrivaled torque they currently claim this tool has an industry leading torque of 1400 pounds and i believe marketing wise that is true because no other drill is marketed at a higher uh, peak torque than that it does also feature anti-kickback has advanced braking technology to let you work with confidence we're going to get in that a little bit later it has a half inch full metal ratcheting chuck long lasting and reliable and this tool is backed by a five-year tool uh, warranty depending on like when you look at this video if you buy this tool uh, in 2021 and register before December within I think it was like 30 days or something like that you have a limited founders lifetime warranty which you know could do you a little better so they're probably trying to get people onto this platform it does have an LED light the no load speed goes up to 2000 rpms if you engage turbo it actually goes up to 2500 rpms the impact rate goes up to 32000 ipms if you engage turbo it actually jumps up to 40000 ipm that's a, that's actually a lot we're going to have to uh, test that uh, it has a 24 volt uh, 24 uh, clutch setting option you know check capacity half inch or whatnot and allegedly without any uh, battery attached to it they say the tool weighs in at a whopping 3.8 pounds so let's talk about this handle this is pretty much an all metal hand, uh, handle it goes around the drill right around the, where the gearbox is and the metal part goes you know all the way to about here or so or whatnot right so it's a twist on twist off pretty much a similar thing you would expect on all the drills that have handles um, it looks like it's some kind of maybe cast metal some aluminum maybe or whatnot probably not aluminum I'm not sure exactly what it is but anyways um, you could put it on the left side or the right side it's uh, you know no not too short not too long uh, probably just about right if you are going to be using this drill for any heavy duty hammer drilling or any heavy duty applications, I will strongly recommend using this drill, mainly because this is a very powerful drill and you know more leverage is always better, right? So uh, let's go ahead and talk about this drill real quick. So if you're holding this drill, this is obviously the left side of the drill, pretty standard stuff. Um, we're gonna talk about this just a little bit more than some of the other tools, mainly because Flex is generally fairly more new, right? So all this black stuff here you see is rubber overmold. It's got like some skid mark plates, if you wanna call it that here. Um, this, it does have a belt clip and interesting, 
oddly enough, this belt clip can only be installed on this side of the drill. You cannot, like for instance, you cannot uh, install this uh, belt clip on this side. You would think that you could, but there is no hole for the screw to go. And without the screw, you can't really hold the belt clip in, right? So if you're a right-handed person, you usually install the belt clip on the left side, mainly because you know, you're kind of going like this or whatnot, right? But if you're left-handed, it's gonna be really awkward because you know the belt clip is gonna be on this side, right? So just make sure you keep that in mind. Um, other than that, it's got you know flex uh, here. It's got like a hammer drilling logo here. It says brushless here. It also say brushless on the back, and it also say brushless here, and probably some other places we haven't noticed already. But that's what's really going on there. Uh, moving around to the back here, um, this obviously a place you know we could hook like a lanyard or something like that or some kind of connecting mechanism. It's a flat back. It'll say brushless and it'll also say turbo just in case you were you're looking at your drill and you didn't know it was turbo. It's gonna say turbo right there. Uh, moving around to the right side, pretty much exactly the same as left side except right here where you would have like logo and stuff like that. It just has a sticker, right? Um, other than that, not too much frills or stuff, anything going on there. I don't know if you could put like a bit holder here. It doesn't look like you really can because there's really no mechanism to hold it in place, but that's what really exists, right? So let's move around to the front. If you move around to the front, obviously there is an LED light right here at the base. And right above that is what everybody's probably really interested in, is this button here called Turbo. It actually says Turbo written on it, and there's a button that actually points to the Turbo and the um, LED light here. So if you press it once, it'll, you know, if you don't have it engaged, you press it, turn on, turn it off, and it will have a memory function. So if you turn it on, and for whatever reason, you used up your battery, right? And you got a new one on, it'll know that it was in turbo when you got off the drill, right? We're gonna drill into that a uh, little bit. Haha, <laughs> pun intended, right? Just kidding. Um, other stuff going on here. Here's obviously the variable speed trigger and that's what's really going on here with the front. Let's go ahead and talk about the top. So the top part, where a lot of stuff happens, there is a mode two and a one, pretty standard on almost all drills. Looks like mostly an all metal gearbox. And like most uh, flagship, uh, uh, heavy duty hammer drills, it has a um, call it or a manual clutch hammer drills. Let me phrase that. It has a separate call it ring just for uh, drill mode selector, and it has a clutch ring that goes all the way from 1 to 24. Um, so let's talk about that for just a second. So on 1, um, the threshold for 1 is no. I would say not as low as you would see on the Makita GPH-01 or even the Makita XPH-12 uh, or 14, right? Or even the 07, right? So one is usually means that it's got like nothing going on. The Milwaukee M12 uh, drill one actually has a really nice setting too. Don't get me wrong by any means, but it takes a little bit more uh, a higher threshold before that clutch really engages. You can kind of see that, right? Um, it's not really too much of a big problem. I'm not really using, you know, the clutch settings too much by any means. But for anybody who is used, like relying heavily on the clutch thing, that could be something to point out. But you know, it is a manual clutch and not a digital or a electronic clutch. So while we're also here, let's go ahead and talk about this variable speed trigger. So this variable speed trigger generally works pretty well. Check this out. Let's take turbo mode off and we're on mode one. Now let's go to mode two. Now let's engage turbo, right? We'll go full. And we'll also see variable speed here. Right? You can also use turbo on gearbox mode one. Turned off. So it generally makes it a little bit faster, okay? So uh, it, it works well, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, so uh, just, just remember that. On the front here, it has an all metal chuck. It is a Jacobs chuck, and it is a 1.5 millimeter to 13 millimeter Jacobs chuck. And as you would expect on all Jacobs chucks, it's got pretty good knurling here. Um, Jacobs chucks, in case you didn't know, are generally considered gold standard for most uh, hammer drills in the market. And you know, there's obviously other uh, chucks out there, but just know the one that comes on this drill is a Jacob's chuck, okay? So while we have you up close, let's go ahead and talk about this battery system, right? Mainly because, you know, we don't really talk about the battery system too much, but this is the flex tool and just generally pretty new, right? So battery system, all this black stuff here, like you think is rubber over molded, right? And unlike most uh, battery, uh, 
uh, power tow battery system on the market. This has a LED fuel gauge bar on both sides, right? So usually you see on batteries, most of the fuel gauge is on this side or this side, but this one actually has it on the longer side. So you press it once, it will actually stay on on this side and this side, right? So you kind of see it on both. It's got pretty much the standard, you know, like a cobalt looking feeling, you know, in disengagement me uh, lever mechanism there. But other than that, not too much, no frills, no thrills. Um, it's got little air holes and stuff like that. And, you know, when you're charging it on a, a high power charger or whatnot, it will, you know, air cool it by any means. So um, this is a 2.5 amp hour battery. And I currently believe that almost all of the flex batteries do use 21 uh, 700 series cells. But other than that, that's what you really get.
All right, I hope you caught those numbers because those numbers went by really fast. Just in case you didn't, we're going to do a recap. But before we do a recap, I'm going to tell you how we run all the tests. And this is pretty much the same for every test that we do in the series of, of this drill series, right? Um, so the way that we run the test is we run a series of tests with all the uh, battery packs that we do. And we let the tool rest a minimum of 30 minutes between each battery pack set, right? And then when we do run with the battery packs, we run it with, you know, um, three on the five, six, ten inch lag. Then we run the three on the uh, half inch lag. Then we run the uh, two on the auger. And then we run, I think, the three on the masonry, right? So most of all the tests are done that way. The main reason I'm telling you that is because um, this drill has turbo mode, right? So we started each of the battery uh, tests with turbo mode engaged. And then we try to turn it back on every time it was off and it will not turn on. But the reason I'm telling you that is because somewhere throughout the test, it will automatically stop being engaged, right? That's the reason I'm telling you. So let's go take a look at the numbers, right? With a 2.5 amp hour battery, the first run comes in um, with a 5, 6, 10 inch lag test. First run, 1.52. Second run, 2 point, uh, First run, 1.52 seconds, peak torque 112. Second run, uh, 2.07 seconds peak torque 108 third run 1.53 seconds peak torque 111 um, it did complete that on speed 2 with turbo engaged and the average of the uh, three runs comes in at 1.71 seconds peak torque 110.33 while that was fast mainly because that was also sub two seconds right uh, moving on to the half inch um, lag test first run 11.44 seconds peak torque 338 if you look at the clip, you notice we zoomed in on it mainly because I don't think it actually completed that even with the additional trigger pulls, but we gave it to it anyways because it was close enough. And after that run, turbo was no longer engaged and it will not come back on. Second run, 10.16 seconds. Uh, the torque measuring device turned off. We don't have measurement for that one. Um, third run, 8.39 seconds, peak torque 345. It did complete that on speed one with, you know, some with turbo, some without. Um, averaging three runs comes in at 10 seconds flat and uh, 341.5 inch pounds. Uh, three quarter inch auger test, first run 6.03, second run 6.27, speed two, it did complete that, no turbo, uh, averaging two runs coming at 6.15 seconds, and um, moving on to the masonry test, quarter inch masonry test, remember we reused the new bit. Um, first run, 7.33 seconds, second run 4.5 seconds, third run 5.36 seconds, Take an average of three runs comes in at 5.73 seconds. The peak torque measured across all of the tests that we did with the 2.5 amp hour battery came in at a whopping 345 inch pounds. And this uh, battery uh, paired with this tool weight will weigh in at a whopping 5.3, uh, five pounds, three ounces. You know, that's a fair to that combination, right? So um, the total performance score with this battery and the FX1271 comes in at 17. 0.85 seconds. Where does that put that? That puts this drill currently almost all the way at the bottom, right around you know 12th place or so, right behind the Milwaukee 2804-20, which is the third gen Milwaukee M18 fuel half inch hammer drill with a three amp hour high output battery, which got a score of 16.68, just barely, uh, you know, just edging it out, right? So let's move on um, to see how it does with the five amp hour battery, right? 5 amp hour battery, first run, 2.01 seconds, peak torque 117. Second run, 1.35 seconds, peak torque 115. Third run, uh, 1.56 seconds, uh, peak torque 100. And it did complete that on speed two with turbo. And if you average out the uh, three runs, comes in at 1.64 seconds, peak torque 110.67. Also sub two seconds, right? So um, I believe right here is when the turbo cut out, but moving on to the half inch lag test, First run 6.64, peak torque 382. Second run 5.54, peak torque 327. Third run 5.54, peak torque 356. Did have to drop down to speed one to complete that test. Remember, no turbo. Um, average of three runs coming at 5.91 seconds, peak torque 355 inch pounds. Moving on to the three quarter inch auger test. 4.43 seconds first run, second run 4.42 seconds. It did complete that on speed two, no turbo. And uh, the average of the two runs comes in at 4.43 seconds. Moving on to the quarter inch masonry test. First run 5.56, second run 5.25, third run 6.05. Average of three runs comes in at 5.62 seconds. The peak torque measured uh, while running the test with the five amp hour battery comes in at a whopping um, 808. 
382 inch pounds. And I tell you on all the tests, you know, that thing, I'm not sure how accurate it is going at the high speed that's going at, but you know, it is what it is. Um, the weight uh, for this tool paired with this battery will come in at a whopping five pounds, 15.7 ounces. That's really close to just six pounds, right? So the total performance score of this uh, five amp hour battery and this tool comes in at a whopping 11.97, 11.97. Where does that put that? That puts this drill with the five amp hour battery in fourth place right behind the Milwaukee GPH, or I'm sorry, the Makita GPH-01, that's the 40 volt XGT model with the 2.5 amp hour battery and right in front of the DCD-996 with the 12, uh, 20 volt max uh, 9 amp hour flex volt battery, um, which came in at a whopping 13.08 seconds. The Makita one had 11.85, so just, you know, barely edging it out, right? So, um, when you buy the tool as a kit, uh, you can buy it as a tool or kit only, but if you buy it as a kit, it'll come with a 2.5 and a 5 amp hour battery, you know, and this, and charger, box, and stuff like that, right? So, um, there's a big difference, obviously, be, um, in the heavy duty uh, applications, like high torque applications, like the half inch lag, but on the other tests, you know, there's a small bit of difference, but not huge by any means, right? So, I'm sorry, we're talking really fast, but we got a lot of stuff to go through, and I'm trying to keep this video as short as we can. So, let's move on and test um, the bad, the drill with the eight amp hour battery, mainly because this is a big boy battery, right? And then we're gonna figure out if this drill actually can draw more power and generate more power with this uh, battery, right? So, starting off with turbo mode engaged, first run, um, five seconds in lag test, 1.43 seconds, peak torque 130. Second run, uh, 1.34 seconds, peak torque 102. Third run, 1.52 seconds, peak torque 89. And I believe right around uh, run two and run three, turbo mode disengaged and would not come on. So it did complete that on speed two, uh, some of them with turbo, some of them without turbo. And the average of three runs comes at 1.43 seconds, peak torque 107. Yes, it is sub uh, two seconds. The moving on the half inch uh, lag test. First run 5.58 seconds, uh, peak torque 375. Second run 6.28 seconds, peak torque 394. Third run 5.56 seconds, peak torque 378. It did complete that on speed one. No turbo, average unit three runs comes in at 5.81 seconds, peak torque 287. Moving on to the three quarter inch auger test. First run 4.47, second run 4.37. It did run that on speed two, no turbo. Averaging the two runs comes in at 4.42 seconds. Um, moving on to the quarter inch masonry test. Uh, first run 5.51, second run 5.24, third run 6.09. Averaging the three runs comes in at 5.61 seconds. Remember, no turbo, hammer mode, um, speed two. The peak torque that we measured with running the eight amp hour battery across all the tests comes in at a whopping 394 uh, inch pounds and the weight uh, with the eight amp hour battery and the tool comes in at a whopping six pounds, 14 ounces. That's heavy. That's probably the heaviest one we've tested. I believe the only ones that really come close is maybe the Milwaukee 20 to 4 third gen M18 fuel with the 12 amp hour battery, which weighed in at a whopping six pounds, 9.1 ounces. And the DeWalt DCD 999 with the nine amp hour flex volt battery, um, which is six pounds, 7.9 ounces, right? So, you know, it's really heavy. Remember 24 volts, I mean, it has one extra cell per every uh, P that it has, right? So now let's go see what is the total performance number for this drill and um, the eight amp hour battery. That is 11.66, 11.66. That puts this drill, bam, in third place, right behind the DeWalt DCD 999, uh, that's a 20 volt max flex volt advantage with the nine amp hour flex volt battery, which had a score of 11.25. And right in front of the Makita GPH-01, which is the 40 volt uh, XGT model with a 2.5 amp hour battery. So it's right in between there, right? So, I mean, those numbers are really, really close. We're talking about 11.25 uh, versus 11.66 versus 11.85. It's all generally within the margin of error. You know, anyone can probably lean either way. So um, that's what's really going on with this, right? So there is a huge amount of difference between the 2.5 and the five, but not too much of a difference between the five and the eight until it comes down to really like the heavy duty applications. But even in that case, it wasn't too bad by any means, right? 5.81 versus 5.91, stuff like that, right? So 
Anyways, uh, what can we uh, really say about this tool, right? Let's talk about some other stuff we didn't talk about so far. This is a nice tool, right? One of the other things that we didn't talk about too much on here is the anti-kickback feature. And if you watch the GPH-01 model or the Makita GPH-01 video, I did sometimes complain a little bit about, you know, it's not sensitive enough. On this one, I believe they have done that really well and tuned it almost perfectly. For instance, Do it again, right? So um, if it senses that feedback or kickback, it will shut the tool off immediately. That one, like I said, is tuned pretty well, you know, drilling and doing some heavy duty applications that didn't accidentally go off, right? So that one is really nice. So let's go talk about this turbo gimmicky feature, if you wanna call it that by any means. I personally believe the turbo thing is a gimmick. Am I happy that the turbo function feature thing is there? Sure. Um, did I buy this tool mainly for the turbo thing? Not really. It's probably a good time to tell you I did buy this tool. Nobody sent this to us. This is not sponsored, no affiliation. We just went out and bought it with their own monies, right? Um, it's, a, it's a gimmick mainly because it cannot stay on, right? So um, under heavy duty applications, it will somehow thermal out and then it will turn it off and it will, you cannot engage it. We'll throw some clips we haven't done so already, right? And I believe that is a function of the the tool itself, right? Mainly because if it turns off, you can slap a brand new battery, cold battery on there or regular temperature battery, and you cannot get it to turn back on, which means that it's a function of the tool and not necessarily the battery. Also, it makes sense that um, when you run a bigger battery with more heavier, heavier duty applications, that it will turn off quicker, right? Mainly because a bigger battery is able to push more power. More power means more um, heat, right? So as you could, I don't know if you've noticed it, but on the 2.5 amp hour battery, it caught out after run one of the half inch lag test, five amp hour battery cut out between the five sixteenths inch and the half inch. And um, the, with eight amp hour battery, it cut out right after the second um, five, six inch engine lag test, right? So that's something to point out. You could argue, you know, resting it for 30 minutes is not enough, all kinds of fun stuff, right? Anyways, the point is that I think that we're using a bigger battery and pushing more power to it will heat it up faster um, if you're using it for heavy duty applications and it will, you know, make it turn off and not able to get it back on. And that's why I'm telling you it's a gimmick, mainly because, you know, I can't imagine everybody out there, you know, using it and trying to get turbo on every time, right? I would much rather have that turbo function, you know, just be like, let's say Gearbox Mode 3. That way you can always be in Gearbox Mode 3, right? And not necessarily have that, right? So it's like a finicky, gimmicky feature type thing. Having it sure you can go way faster, right? 500 RPMs, I guess if you want to argue by that, it means, um, but, because it can't always stay on, we ran the test as you would do in real life, right? Uh, test, 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 you know, and then, you know, if it doesn't turn on, you just keep working, right? No one's going to sit there, letting the drill cool down to get the turbo mode back on, right? That if you are, then I don't know, we'll have to have a different discussion, but I don't think people would do that by any means. So why am I talking about that? Because one of the things that we did do in additional was we let this tool rest for a full overnight. And then we came back on another day and then ran uh, in the morning, like immediately morning uh, with the eight amp hour battery again with turbo mode engaged on the masonry test. Why did we do that? Uh, mainly because if you look at the specs, this uh, drill with um, in turbo mode will go up to 2,500 RPM and 40,000 BPM. They call it IPM, but I'm gonna go call it BPM, right? So most hammer drills on the market will go right around 32,000 uh, BPM. This one with turbo goes 40,000. Only things that come close is the Makita GPH-01 that goes 39,000, and then the DCD-999, which goes 38,250. Um, other drills, let's say like the uh, 2804 Milwaukee will go 32,000. There's other like Makita drills that go around 32,000 and other, you know, 32,000 seems to be like the sweet spot for most of them. But with turbo, it goes 40,000. So we went with the cool drill, cool battery, and let's go take a look at what happened when we ran the masonry test. First run, 3.1 seconds. Second run, 3.34 seconds. Third run, 3.26 seconds. You average the three runs comes in at 5.23 or 3.23 seconds. Wow, that's fast because that is the fastest hammer drilling setup that we've currently seen so far, right? Because the fastest one so far, I believe, was the DCD-999 with a nine amp hour battery, which had a fastest score of 3.30 seconds on average, which this one and this uh, setup comes in at 3.23 seconds. And you could argue, you know, you know, 
38,250 BPM versus 40,000 BPM, you know, kind of makes sense. Um, but the point is that in a perfect setup and like cool, cool testing and right away, you can get those numbers, right? But if you're doing a lot of that, eventually it's going to thermod and you're going to have to go back to, you know, non-turbo mode, which will come in at 5.61 seconds, right? So if you're doing a lot of that, I would just get the 999. Actually, if you're doing a lot of making like get just get a SDS, right? But if you had this setup, it doesn't make sense to go with the 999 because you can just, you know, drill all the time. So that's what I want to say, right? So let's close this out because this video is getting really long and I'm sorry. So, so the first, what can we say about this drill? This is a great drill. There's no question about it by any means. I mean, it's, they put together a really nice system, right? Um, do Flex have all the stuff on the market? Like we mentioned all the time Flex videos. Probably not because it's fairly new. I'm um, sure they're going to release more and more later as time goes on, right? But the question I'm going to ask, or if you're going to ask, should I buy this tool? Depends. Personally, I would not buy this tool even though we did buy it. Uh, mainly because we're just not invested heavily into the flex lineup. If you're not heavily invested into any kind of lineup by any means, I would definitely go or in, in your and you don't mind getting into the flex lineup, go buy the tool. It's a great tool, right? But for me, if we're already in like the Makita lineup or whatnot or any Milwaukee DeWalt lineup, it doesn't make sense to really get into it just for the drill, right? And in case you just don't care about, you know, consolidating your battery lineups, but it's a great drill. Um, is the turbo feature gimmick or whatnot? Eh, it's up to you for you to decide. I can just tell you the numbers of how it really works, right? So uh, remember, don't buy a tool just purely based on numbers unless you know that's all you care about. But um, just giving you numbers and helping you make the decision. You have to go figure it out. I believe this tool right now currently is right around, I know normally it's around 250-ish, but right now I believe it's on sale for right around 199. And it comes with, you know, this. Um, and, a, and a case and a charger and stuff like that. So if you add like a $20 off coupon or 20% off or 10% off, 15% off, you could probably get this down to right around like one, you know, 40, 160, if you get, 140 if you get lucky, maybe 160, 175. In that case, it's a great deal. You should definitely run out and go get this, right? Um, I'm just letting you know. So anyways, that's what numbers say. Um, hope this video helped you guys out. And if you have any questions or whatnot, let me know. Otherwise, have a great day and we'll see you guys next time.